beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see this it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy anytime we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy anytime we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to that. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it also by doing this you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel then don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so and you are new here and then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too you were blessed son. stay blessed one more time, I'd like us to pray. Father, speak to me again this morning. My heart is open to receive in the name of Jesus. Is someone praying? Speak to me again. The word of the Lord can come again. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. We thank God for this conference and the mighty things that, um, that God has been doing through his servants. And I was so blessed again hearing the man of God charge our hearts because most times believers hear the word but we are not careful and attentive to do that which we have heard. The Bible says they heard the word just like we did, but the word did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. It is important that we not only hear, but we obtain grace from God to walk in keeping with that which we have heard. I felt very strongly in my heart right from the beginning of my session to share what I'm about to share. It will be a brief charge as a final note. And um, one of the major hindrances, one of the major hindrances to becoming all that God has destined for you to be, aside from demonic attacks, aside from ignorance and all of these aspects that we've dealt with is the spirit of fear i want you to please pay attention lend me your attention for a few minutes as we trust god by his word to bring to a permanent end this cancer that has destroyed great destinies hallelujah i will fear no evil Please prophesy to yourself. Say, I will fear. Psalm 23. Help us, O God, in the name of Jesus. Psalm 23. Psalm 23. We we'll begin from verse 1. It says, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. We're reading the whole scripture. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leaded me beside the still waters. He restored my soul. He leaded me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. 
verse 4, he says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. And that my lack of fear is based on this revelation. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Verse 5. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. He says, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Say amen. amen. Joshua chapter 1, please, and verse 9. After the death of Moses... Joshua was now saddled with the responsibility to assume leadership, leading God's people into the promised land. And naturally, he was afraid because those people were a stiff-necked people. They could be rebels at any time. And the Lord was charging him, verse 9 now, 1 verse 9, Joshua, Have I not commanded thee, be strong and of a good courage? He says, Be not afraid neither be thou dismayed for the lord thy god is with thee whithersoever thou goest hallelujah can we read one more scripture hebrews chapter 2 please from verse 14 hebrews chapter 2 and verse 14 the bible says for as much as the children are partakers of flesh and blood he also himself likewise took part of the same that through death he might destroy him that hath the power of death. That is the devil. 15 is the verse of emphasis. Next verse, please. It says, and to deliver them who through fear. Could be fear of anything. In this case, the fear of death. Were all their lifetime subject to bondage. There is a relationship between fear and bondage. Are we together? That one of the ways that a man can be kept in bondage, and you know bondage symbolizes confinement. There is no motion under bondage. He says to deliver them who through fear have all their lifetime. That means a man's entire lifetime can be under siege. Fear, I wrote here, is both a spiritual condition and a psychological condition. Please pay attention. When it has to do with the subject of fear, there is a spiritual dimension to fear and there is a psychological dimension to fear. May I back up a bit and tell you that most people have not been able to live on common lives and destinies not just because they have not heard from God, not just because their prophet has not spoken over them, but they have not sustained the courage and the revelation to exert dominion over the spirit of fear. Hallelujah. The great man Gideon in the Bible was a man who had the destiny of a warrior and a leader and a victor, but fear kept him in the place of hiding. It is amazing how fear can keep a great destiny, an enviable destiny. And you would think time will naturally erode fear. The Bible says those who through all their lifetime, that means from birth till your final transition, you can be a victim of fear. There are many businesses today that should have been founded that should be blessing the world. There are many mantles today that most people do not have the courage to receive. There are many graces today that many people have been able, unable to take. There are many giant strides in ministry, in business, in life, in destiny, financially. Many people have been kept grounded even to their detriment because of this one factor of fear. Hallelujah. Second Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7. Second Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7. May I please request that we read it together. Ready? One, two, read. For God had not given us the spirit of fear. Hold on. 
One more time. For God had not given us. One more time to that verse again. For God had not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Look how serious fear is. It takes three spiritual forces to bring it to end. Are you getting me now? Don't you downplay the wicked ministry of that spirit. That it, it doesn't just take casting away. What kind of a mysterious manifestation is this? That it will take power. Then it will take the rebel. Then to be part of creating our realities. Listen carefully. The purpose of fear is to gain access to our imaginations and our expectations and then to be part of creating our realities. Job chapter 3 and verse 25. The purpose of fear is to gain access to our imaginations and expectations and then to be part of creating our realities. I'd like you to please read this scripture. It's projected. Ready? One to read. For the thing which I greatly feared is come upon me. And that which I was afraid of is come to me. One more time. For the thing which I greatly feared is come upon me. And that which I was afraid of. As a general rule. The Bible and even science and psychology, all of these forces agree as to how physical realities manifest to an individual. That everything starts from the realm of the spirit through your thoughts and imaginations. Do we agree on that? Hallelujah. That the realities that manifest physically are only a physical expression of your imaginations and your thoughts. In fact, the Bible tells us that just like your physical prayer, your mindset and your thoughts and your imaginations are also prayer warriors and that God can answer both. Now unto him, the Bible says, Ephesians 3.20, who is able to do exceeding abundantly, far above all we ask and think. If I say sit here or sit here, it means both of them have similar values, even if not equal values. So if my prayer life says, God help me, and my imagination says, God forget about it, it says God has the power to answer both. Are you getting me now? So if I want to be great, a great destiny starts with a great mindset and a great thought life. A defeated destiny starts with a defeated mindset and a defeated thought life. Satan knowing this, that our physical lives are products of the quality of our thoughts and imagination would now introduce the spirit of fear to be part of the building process of your imagination so that what happens in your life naturally becomes a product of your fearful thoughts. Job was saying here that the thing I feared most, that means when Satan wanted to destroy Job, he did not just start destroying people physically. He came to his thoughts. So one day, this is how everything will live. So one day, my glory will fade away. And he would see his children dancing. And say, so one day, I would sit down and mourn. And he did not know that his thoughts had the power to attract the physical equivalent of what he was thinking. Are we together now? The thing that I feared most has come upon me. Proverbs 23 and verse 7. Proverbs 23 and verse 7. Here is wisdom from scripture. For as he thinketh in his heart. The Bible didn't say so he will become. He says so he is. So so is he. It literally equates your current condition with your thought life. That means... Your life today, in all its summation, physically, financially, and so on and so forth, is a messless report card showing us the quality of your thinking before now or otherwise. Your physical environment cannot be anything different from the quality of your thought life. This is true. 
Even the Bible says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. That Jesus did not just excel because he was the son of God. There was something about his thoughts and imagination that kept him in a position of perpetual victory. I once heard a story, very interesting story. I don't know whether it's, it's real or fiction, but it blessed me. There was someone who was going to accomplish an impossible feat. Please listen carefully. And he was to climb a very high tower. And many people had attempted to climb, but the, the ladder or so was not really strong. And so it could knock them down. And then the person began to climb. And when he got midway, the people under saw him. And they began to talk to him. They were crying and some of them were lamenting and beckoning on him to come. And they noticed he was smiling and he kept climbing. He kept climbing and they were already afraid. Some of them were wondering what kind of death this person was going to die. And he kept climbing and finally he overcame all that barrier and got to the top. And in congratulating him later, they got to find out that the reason why he arrived there was because he was deaf. The man was a deaf man, so he was not hearing what they were saying. So his mindset told him they were cheering him. Please, you can make it. Based on that imagination, it gave him the fuel to finish. Whereas what they were actually saying is you will die. You better come down. That deafness became his advantage to win. The first thing that happened to man to destroy him, Satan did not just come to Adam and Eve and then in one day they fell. No, his first assignment was to corrupt their imagination and to corrupt their thought life. The Bible is written in summary. So you would think the conversation just happened in five minutes and then that was the end of it. No, it was persistent suggestion. And the Bible says after Adam and Eve fell, when the Lord came in the cool of the day and said, Adam, where are you? Adam said, I heard your voice, but I hid because I was naked. Next question, who told you? You have allowed another influence other than my voice into the space of your mind. Who told you you cannot be a champion? Who to the Bible says, Paul was speaking, he says, there is, as it were, many voices. And says, none of them is without signification. That means the voice of your past, the voice of your background. There are many people today who would have been champions. If only they did not have ungodly teachers who called them certain names. You rejected it, but it still entered. You, it's not for people like you. This is the plague of Africa. Either because of the color of your skin or your sociological context, we believe we can never truly rise to maximize destiny. And even though sometimes we may verbally confess it, but the truth is that our minds have become stumbling blocks, refusing to allow us rise. Are we together? Recall my story again. These people were calling him down. Come down. Some were standing and even begging. And based on his mindset, because they were, he was deaf, his mind told him they are cheering you, don't fail them. They are looking up to you. And he kept pushing till he won. Are we blessed? The purpose of fear, I repeat again, is to gain access to our imagination and expectations and then to now participate in creating that negative reality. Please write this very quickly. There are three dimensions of fear we must overcome to become uncommon and to excel in life and destiny. There are three dimensions of fear. If you cannot conquer this dimension of fear, believe me, even if one gallon of oil is poured on you, you may not imagine much. Number one, the first dimension of fear you must conquer is the fear of the past. Please write it down. The first dimension of fear, you must sustain the courage to conquer their champion, their destiny changer, their trailblazer, their man of God, their potential billionaire. The first dimension of fear you must conquer is the fear of the past. Someone say in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare 
that the past is past. That the past is past. The fear of the past. Philippians chapter 3 and verse 13. The fear of the past. Brethren, I count myself. I count not myself to have apprehended. But this one thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind. So you don't press until you can forget some things. Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto the things which are before. Verse 14. He says, I press. I press by forgetting. Not just by going forward. I press by forgetting. Now, let me tell you something. The past is a very jealous dimension. It always wants to relieve itself. The past, your yesterday, will always want to find expression again. Past failures, past experiences, past defeats. Before you got born again, you were under the siege of darkness. And chances are excellent that the memory of your defeat still resides within your mind. And when you want to make giant strides, here comes Satan again. Through the spirit of fear, did you not fail before? Have you changed? Is it not your same name? Are you not the one who failed in school? Are you not the one who failed in destiny? When you registered that company, was it not in shame you returned? And you will return back to status quo. Assignment of fear done. Is someone hearing? This is very important. The spirit of fear. The fear of the past. There are several people who cannot go forward because of the fear of yesterday. Yesterday is a jealous realm. It wants to relieve itself in your today and relieve itself in your tomorrow. But you have to, you have to, God created that tripartite nature of time to give you peace and to give you rest. He separated time into three dimensions yesterday or past today or present tomorrow or future that that tripartite separation was to be able to grant you peace so that the version of me yesterday may not be the version today you may be talking to the wrong person are we together now can i tell you the 2021 version of you is not the version sitting down here so don't you allow the failure of last year when the devil is speaking, you may wear the same cloth. You may have the same voice. You may have whatever. But you can tell the devil, go back to last year and talk to that version. But as far as this is concerned, you are talking to one who has heard the word. You, have, you are talking to one who has changed. Hallelujah. Do you know the reason why many people do not rise in Africa and even in Nigeria? They are surrounded by environments that knew them all their lives so when you want to do something people say from where where did this start that's why usually one of the ways that god raises champions is to take them out of their default environment into a strange environment that does not know anything about your history so that you can now begin to rise and thrive. Why do you think they told everybody, he said, kill everybody in Jericho and save Rahab because this woman will one day be the great grandmother of Jesus so that nobody will be connected who knows her history that she was once a prostitute. If someone had survived, you would say, you don't know who this woman is. There are many people who cannot rise because of yesterday. The limitation of yesterday. You were downsized from work. And so when you start a company and someone sees your face, they now laugh and say, look at somebody who could not move from this level to this level. is now starting a real estate firm. Let's sit down and watch wonders. I have good news for you. It is true that Jesus died, but he didn't die forever. He only died for three days. Don't be talking about the Jesus who died when he has already come back to life. Are we together now? There are many of you, your yesterday may not be anything about. 
to write home about full of poverty failure defeat ignorance some of you may not even be born again at as at yesterday but thank god for the gift of today today is the remedy for yesterday today is the bridge between yesterday and tomorrow every time you wake up in the morning know that god gave you a gift a gift to correct yesterday and rewrite it in tomorrow is someone learning yes sir the company called seven up you know how they derived their name seven up seven up came because they failed six times so seven up meant six down and seven now up that's how the name came six times if you had come at the fifth time you would advise the man and say look as a co-brother in this in this financial thing you are not going to make it after five times you should quit I rejoice not over me my enemies that though I fall I will rise again God brought a prophetic word for someone I know that they demolished your house years ago but till now you have not built you have been given flimsy excuses while time is going it's time to make up your mind you have a plot of land but you are waiting until the day you have 30 million you will never build the one million you have go and buy sharp sand with it and pour it let the devil see that that signature of God's favor there is someone hearing what I'm saying? Who said you cannot rise? There is good in every land. There are principles of forcing your portion to come to you. Hmm. It says out of the earth comes bread. The profit of the earth is for all. That even the king is fed from it. The fear of the past. Growing up in ministry, I saw several people fail in ministry around me. Some did not even do anything. At best, there was almost nothing at all. I said, no, this thing can be different. I read in my Bible that the same Lord is rich unto all. I read in my Bible that from where thou art, lift up your eyes. You don't need to get to the future. Let your eyes just get there. From where you are, you may not be able to move there, but you can lift your eyes. Are we together? From where thou art, lift up your eyes. For someone you came to church today to stop giving excuses about yesterday. It's time to stop giving excuses about yesterday. I repeat, it's time to stop. I sympathize with you. Yes, I know that you were abused growing up. I do not endorse that. Yes, I know that you could not move forward because maybe you lost your loved ones. I sympathize with you. But hey, close that chapter and begin to move forward. The fear of yesterday. Someone pray while you are seated in the name of Jesus. Yesterday I wave you goodbye. I wave you goodbye once and for all. I wave you goodbye. You will not kill my today and my tomorrow. Someone prophesy the failures of yesterday, the limitations of yesterday, the troubles of yesterday. As at yesterday, I was a sinner, but I'm no longer a sinner. As at yesterday, I was lazy, but I'm no longer lazy. As at yesterday, I was a failure, but today I'm no longer a failure. As at yesterday, I was spiritually ignorant, but today I'm no longer ignorant. Yesterday, stop relieving your life in my today. You have had your share in my destiny, and you remain there. This one thing I do, forgetting the things that are behind. Someone say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Is, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Jesus would have maintained that statement. And now even though anointed by the spirit, he would have said, ah, I remember oh, when I was growing up, somebody said, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Go and read your Bible and see the kinds of people that God raised to become champions read their backgrounds the things that are written aforetime the bible says that they are for our learning it is not unusual for people to laugh at you when you start you are not the only one they laughed at they laughed at every champion so don't take it personal throw it in your yesterday and face your front to move if you fail fail honorably while you are using god did not give you the gift of today to regret over yesterday that is an unwise use of time. Is someone learning? 
the second level of fear, second dimension of fear that you must conquer is the fear of the present. The fear of the present. Now we have dealt with the fear of the past. The fear of the present. Is someone learning? The fear of the present. Slash the fear of being controversial. Uh -huh. The fear of being controversial. I can tell you this by the spirit, dear people. Everyone who has lived an uncommon life is also one who has sustained the courage to be controversial. Naturally speaking and psychologically speaking, there is an emotional comfort that comes with looking good in the eyes of men. There is an emotional comfort that comes with status quo. There is an emotional comfort that comes with looking good in the eyes of people. But great people are those who will defy whatever it is, provided they know they are walking based on scripture with the integrity of God in their hearts. They will press forth. And you see, the truth is that once you see the consistency versus the result, you will join them in the future. Their stability and their sustainability will eventually attract you. Listen to me. You must conquer the fear that comes with the present. What will people say? Nobody has ever done this kind of thing in Abuja. What will people say? Colonel Sanders at age 78 or thereabout, retired from the army, just sat down and found out that he had a recipe for chicken and he was doing it and he liked it. Nobody signed any form that will buy your chicken. He could as well have been a total failure and people will say, old man, Carry the honor you got from army and return back and die in peace. But the guy refused. Think whatever you have to think. I am starting. And he started what we know today as KFC. Every time you line up to buy chicken, remember it was courage that made you line up today. That even after the man is long gone, you still cannot resist the fruit of his courage. Jeremiah 1. Is someone learning? Jeremiah chapter 1 from verse 7 and 8. This was the Lord speaking to the young boy Jeremiah. Jeremiah 1 from verse 7. 7. 7. Now look at this. He told Jeremiah as a young boy. He says when right from when you were in your mother's womb. I called you and I ordained you to be a prophet to the nations. But the boy was afraid. And he said ah Lord don't say that because I am a child. Verse 7. But the Lord said unto him, verse 7 now, please keep 7. Say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Verse 8. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Be not afraid of their faces. There are lots of people who are failures and mediocres, and their face can be so intimidating, they can make you leave what you are doing that is right and become a failure. You have to conquer the fear of being controversial. Every vision speaks at the end, not at the beginning. Wanting a vision to speak at the beginning is a waste of time. Listen, we live in a world, respectfully speaking, especially our world today, where we are overly, we are overly conscious of our reputation, my ego. I don't want to hurt anybody. Whether you are Jesus or Satan, you are still not free. As far as being perceived to be controversial is concerned, we talk about Jesus, we talk about Satan. Anyone in between, you must also face the share of it. There are many people who cannot do great things because they are afraid. Now, do all you can within the, the power of God given to you to maintain a blameless, a great, and an exceptional life. But can I tell you this? Living your life based on people's scripts will be a disaster. I repeat, living your life based on people's scripts. Do not make yourself a victim of people's... They write a script and give you to live it. Uh-uh. Are we together? What are you doing in church every day? All these church, church people, that's what makes you to keep failing. 
and you sit down and start becoming, you start feeling stupid for being a faithful worker in church. And every time you are going to church, you are going to church and there is nothing. I'm sitting down here, I don't love the Lord, but I bought a car. You are seeing it and you feel, you feel the next time it's time to go to church and carry your Bible and move. You are afraid. Can I tell you, stand strong. You will always win with God. It is better to fail with God than to win without him. Did you hear what I said? If there is any expression like that, I rather fail with God than to win without him. The fear of the present. God is speaking to someone. There are people after this service you need to go to CSC and register a new company. There are people after this service you need to trust God for grace. That business, you wrote it since 2019. You wrote five. Other people have done four of your businesses now. You have refused to move because you are afraid. Make your mistake honorably while you move. Let them mock you while you learn. Champions are learners that never stop. Did you hear what I said? Champions are not professionals. Champions are learners that never stop. Are you going to make mistakes on the way? Many, not one. But you keep moving. There's such a thing, in fact, I think one of these authors wrote a book, Failing Forward. Please look up. Let me give you an analogy as we prepare to pray. If a plane is moving forward, and you are seated in front in that plane, and you get up and go backwards to use the restroom, are you going back? Please talk to me. Are you going back? With respect to that plane, you are moving back. But with respect to the overall destiny, where are you going? So don't you think because temporarily you are going to do some things, it means you are going back. That hand is moving you forcefully forward. Even when you think you are going back, soon you will open your eyes and see you have arrived. In the name of Jesus Christ. The fear of the present. There are people who have exams to write. There are people who have things to do. There are many men of God who if you give, you give, some of you here are called into ministry. You can prepare, you can pray, you can fast. But when you stand on stage to preach, you are wondering. Every verse disappears. Fail while you are walking and keep moving. What will they say? They will say anyway. So you keep moving. Have you seen people who learn how to drive? While they are learning how to drive, they almost hit something and then they will park and breathe. Will they stop learning? A day will come, that same person will be talking on phone and yet driving. Say mastery. If you are afraid of moving forward, in fact, you, you don't quarrel someone for putting L in front of his car. If the person is making all kinds of mistakes and experimenting on the road, you quickly move and wish the person well. A day will come, that person will remove that L. So while there is hell on your destiny, carry it with nobility and honor. Don't be afraid. Are you getting what I'm saying? Don't be afraid. So what if I'm a learner? And that from a child, thou hast known the Holy Scripture, which is able to make you wise unto salvation. You will not remain a child forever. So while you are a child, no problem. I, it's true, I don't know so much about finances. I don't know so much about my work with the Holy Spirit, but I'm a committed learner. I will come every week. Laugh at me, but I will learn. I will come with my one shoe, with honor and with nobility. I will come from my one room. I might even trek. Let me look controversial now. Be my witness while I'm learning so you will defend me tomorrow while I rise. <laughs> Hallelujah. We live in a world where when people rise, they say they came from nowhere. You are joking. Just because you were not a witness of the training does not mean there was no training. The fear of the present. In one minute, I'd like you to lay your hands on your head and say, Father, the fear, the fear that has stopped me from doing the things that my man of God will instruct me to do, the fear that the fear of the present, I conquer it in the name of Jesus. Someone is praying. Someone is praying. The fear of the present. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. There are some of you right now, you've not been able to move to your next, to your financial future because God gave you an instruction. 
and said, so a particular seed, and he said, God forbid. This one cannot be the voice of the Holy Spirit. No, God cannot punish me like this. And you remain there. God says, I respect you. I gave you a will. Since you have chosen to remain at that level, and your yesterday, your today keeps becoming that negative yesterday because you are unwilling to take a giant step of faith. The third dimension of fear that you must conquer is the fear of the future. The fear especially of future failure. The fear of the future. Sir, you will be amazed at how many people in our world today are afraid of tomorrow. When they go to bed and lie down, they hate the fact that it is already tomorrow. Because they are not sure. Especially because of the kind of world that we live in. World of uncertainty. Especially Africa and around our nation. You hear of wars and rumors of wars, crises. Somebody came out in the morning and did not return back again. You hear that someone went out just to a mall and died in a ghastly motor accident. And fear now starts working in your mind. If that person died, who is your neighbor? How are you sure you are not the next? And now you cannot get up and do certain things because you are afraid. Hallelujah. I remember one time I was returning from a trip. Um, I didn't know a plane had crashed while our own was in the air. There was a plane that had crashed. And as soon as I arrived, I put on my phone, look at so many text messages, scriptures, you shall not die. So what is going on? It was later they now told me that there was, a, there was a plane crash somewhere. And I said, oh dear, I really feel sad for the people I take responsibility. I don't know who will keep interceding for everyone. But as for me, ask the devil. <laughs> you know how many times death has tried me? Don't think I'm just talking nonsense. Hmm. Hallelujah. If there are 10 people who are going to remain alive, I will be praying for the remaining nine. I will not make a bold statement just based on a witch. You see what fear is doing to you? Somebody said this thing, no, apostle and still died. I respect them, but I don't know, I don't know what it is that they believed. But as for me, he said, follow them who through faith and patience. For as long as my eyes have seen people who cross that boundary, there is no reason why I should allow my life to waste cheaply. I have, I have supported myself with scriptures as a garrison. I shall not die, but live and declare. The question is, am I declaring? If you are God and you are downsizing workers, will you downsize me? When you know you are relevant to the kingdom, you can stand based on that and say, by grace, I know that I will live. Number two, honor your father and your mother in the Lord, that it may be well with you and that you may live long. Ask any father physically or spiritually whether I have dishonored them. What becomes the basis of cutting short my life? Let God be true and every man a liar. Most people just make bold claims. Support your claims based on scripture, not experience. The fear of the future. Jeremiah 29, 11. Hmm. You are the one that we praise. You are the one we adore. You give the healing and grace that our hearts always hunger. Oh, our hearts always hunger. Jeremiah 29, 11. Let me speak to someone now. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, Joshua Selman. Say it who? Not an angel, not say it a prophet, say it the Lord. They are thoughts of peace and not of evil for God's sake to give you an expected end. The movie director has already told me the end of it. Have you seen certain movies where even the actor, sometimes the one we call actor now, the main, the starring people, sometimes the man can fall and you think he's dead. And you say, what kind of a dull director who designed this kind of thing? And later on in the midst of the rain, you see fingers moving. 
and he arises at the end of it some of you out of impatience you will even fast forward to the end and still see the man standing and say oh let me come back he didn't die hmm. Hmm. god never starts something until he's finished so when he started your destiny he did not start from the beginning he has gone to the end and he's seen that at the end is victory victory all the way victory all the way listen to me let me tell you the truth do not sit back and wonder the way our nation is going the way this one is going will i survive don't speak those languages of war i like you to be optimistic and to know that i am with god the basis he says though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i shall fear no evil for thou art with me it doesn't have to change for you to be courageous just be sure that jesus is in the boat you don't need to go out of the boisterous sea to find comfort. Verify whether Jesus is in your boat. If he's there, find peace. Will you and him die together? Hallelujah. The fear of the future. Let me tell you the truth I submit to you. When I get up in the morning, I get up with courage. I get up full of faith. I don't sit down. There are people who are even afraid of the coming of Jesus Christ. And that's why they are not productive. They can't build a house and say, for what? When he's coming soon. <laughs> Did he stop you? If you, are, if you are in Christ, should he not come and meet you as a diligent and a responsible man? Someone prophesy, no fear. No. One more time, say, no fear. no fear. In the name of Jesus, say, no fear. No fear. Hmm. No fear. There are people who are it not necessarily because of a demonic attack their children go to school and they cannot rest every five minutes they are calling the teacher is my son okay please find comfort the keeper of israel he does not sleep and he does not slumber do you believe that psalm 3 he says i lay me down and i slept i waked for the lord sustained me go to bed knowing that you will wake up go to bed knowing that you will wake up don't go to bed and wake up and say, I hope I will leave. Oh, this one that power holding company has taken light now. They should bring light. Ah. As simple as what I'm saying is, there are medical people who will tell you that the hospital is full of patients that no machine can diagnose what is wrong with them, but they just cannot move forward. Find comfort and find strength. I'll find somewhere to stop. Another time I will teach you how to really overcome fear. He says there are three forces that can make a believer overcome fear. Number one is power. Micah chapter 3 and verse 8. He says I have power by the spirit. Genuine spiritual power comes through your intimacy with the Holy Spirit. Micah 3 and verse 8. Hallelujah. I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord. So when you ignore your intimacy with the Holy Spirit, there cannot be power. It takes power. That force, that audacity, that engracing from heaven. The first cure to fear is the power that comes from your fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Number two, love. The awareness, the revelation of God's love for you. He says, I have loved you with an everlasting love and I have drawn you with my loving kindness. Is that true? He said, he that did not spare his own son and offered him, wouldn't he freely give you all things? Listen, there is something about the consciousness of the love of God. When a little child comes and jumps from a place like this, looking at his father, he's aware that his father is too responsible to allow him land. Even if he's making a mistake, the father will first hold him, then correct him. Jesus took responsibility over Peter. If it be thou, bid me come. Peter now began to doubt, and Jesus still came to the rescue. Listen, if you are not conscious of God's love for you, fear will destroy you. God loves me. He has invested his jealousy upon my life. Behold what manner of love the Father had bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. He says, now are we the sons of God. Please, someone say, God loves me. Hmm. 
he loves me oh he loves me i don't know about you but i am conscious of the love of god the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god he loves me hallelujah for many reasons i am his son and i am his bride so whichever dimension you go to i qualify to enjoy his love Every woman here will tell you her confidence, among other things, is based on the awareness of the love of her husband to her. Is that true? When your husband tells you you are great, doesn't matter anybody who says you are not. That person is a freelancer. He's, he's part of those who are sitting outside of the field. I have loved you with an everlasting love. This is what the Lord has told me. And I believe. Oh, I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe. If there is any, if I see the Lord Jesus appear here, I know he came for me. Yes, sir. I know he came for me. If the Lord Jesus appears and says, I want to talk to one of my sons, I will say, speak, Lord, I'm listening. I love you, oh, but I know he's speaking to me. Listen, listen, until this becomes a revelation, it has exemption power to know that God loves you. When other people were crying, the apostle stood and said, an angel of the Lord appeared to me and he has told me there shall be no loss. What of the rest? They were all in the same situation and he said, as for me, I've been sorted. He has come to tell me there is peace. As for you people, I'm now comforting you. In the name of Jesus, walk out of this service today knowing that he loves you. Are we together? Walk out of this service knowing that he loves you. And then number three, he says, a sound mind. You overcome fear by contending for word-based transformation. Please write it down. Word-based transformation. Not culture-based transformation. Not westernization-based transformation. As wonderful as they are, transformation does not just mean bringing in another information. You can bring in another wrong information. Your reference for transformation must be scripture. Not just another culture. Let this mind be in you. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5. Which was in Christ Jesus. A transformed mind. A transformed mind is that which is full of the word. You are fortified. The word of God has built a garrison around you. A thousand shall fall by my side, he says, and ten thousand by my right side. He says, none shall harm me. With my eyes will I behold and see the reward of the wicked. We are going to pray. I will fear no evil. I will fear no evil. I will fear no evil. In the name of Jesus, not the evil in the land, not the evil of terrorism, not the evil of being victimized. I am exempted by my awareness of the love of Jesus. Is someone ready to pray? Please rise up on your feet in one minute and I'd like us to pray. You want to live an uncommon life? You must challenge the spirit of fear. This morning, in the next two, three minutes, we are going to challenge the spirit of fear. You have kept me for far too long. It's time to live my life. It's time to live my destiny. Apostle, you do not understand. I took in last year. I even took in this year. Five IVFs, it did not work. I'm even afraid. I don't think I can ever have a child. I'm ready to stay without a child. I bring you good news. He says, Master, we have toiled all night. He said, nevertheless, at thy word. Someone open your mouth in one minute and begin to challenge the spirit of fear i have no covenant with you someone pray fear is a spirit it can hear fear is a spirit it's not just a psychological phenomenon it's not just a state someone is praying in the name of jesus i challenge the spirit of fear i challenge the spirit of fear I challenge the spirit of fear. Fear of excelling in ministry. Are you praying? Fear of doing well in business. Fear of giant strides in the spirit. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. There are people who are in this city but have not enjoyed the blessings of this city. Everyone around them is connected, but fear will not let them rise. 
Hallelujah. Fear will not let them rise. I don't know why God has been speaking to me. You see, I've been talking about houses I'm building. Listen, no. God does not waste words. Maybe this is a word for someone. Apostle, don't, don't, do you know that all I have is 10,000 home and abroad? Who cares? Go and look for where there is a land first. Then tell God you have found it. If it is true that he's a father, go and look for where there is land. Look at it and say, my father, a responsible son has taken that effort. I've seen where it is. Ah, apostle, they say it's 60 million. You didn't hear me. I said it's 10,000 there. Even if you have zero naira, it's still faith that will build it. They got not the land in possession by their own sword. Neither did their arm save them. That should be Psalm 44 and verse 3. For someone who has been praying, they got not the land in possession by their own sword. Neither did their own arm save them, but thy right hand and thine arm and the light of thy countenance because thou hast a favor towards them. I'd like you to begin to pray. Everything fear has stopped from happening in my life. I release my spirit right now and I release my faith. I begin to walk in it between now and the end of 2022. Between now and the end of 2022. Between now and the end of 2022. Every door fear has closed. I open it by faith. Every door fear has closed. I open it by faith. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I'm going to speak over your life. This is my final session. Because faith is the ultimate cure for fear. What is faith? The confident assurance you have that God is not a fraudster. That God is not a scammer. That he only says what he is able to do. Hallelujah. That he only says what he is able to do. Let me pray for someone. In the name of Jesus, I stand in faith with the grace upon this house. And I decree and declare, every door that fear has closed, by the power that raised Jesus from the dead, may that door be open now. May that door be open now. Number two, every level you should have been by now, according to your divine preordination, there are some of you, you are fat. Listen, listen. Let me prophesy to someone. I think it's Micah chapter 2 and verse 10. It says, arise, this is not your rest. Please give it to us. I hope, that, is that it? Micah 2.10. That scripture just came to my spirit. I'm still praying for you. Arise and depart for this is not your rest. Because it is polluted and shall destroy you even with sword destruction. Fear has made you dwell with chickens whereas you are an eagle. I prophesy this scripture. Arise and depart for this is not your rest. Arise and depart for this is not your realm. Arise and depart for this is not your level. Man of God, arise and depart. This is not the dimension God has called you to walk in. Ah, Arise and depart. Dear entrepreneur, this is not your level. I challenge you by prophecy. Arise and depart. Amen. This is not yet your story. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. It says arise and depart. This is not your realm. Arise and depart. Thank God for the one bedroom flat. But let me tell you the truth. You don't need a bigger house to love God. But you need a bigger house to be comfortable enough to serve God. Therefore I decree and declare. That everything that makes for life and godliness. The courage to walk in them until you possess them. Receive it in Jesus name. Listen I'm praying for you from the depth of my heart. You shouldn't be at this level next year by this time. In fact you shouldn't be at this level by December. It's an insult to the graces that have come upon you. I declare any power that may want to hold you down. And not let you move forward. 
in the name of Jesus may it be destroyed may it be destroyed hear me let me speak over you your church is not standing on a rented property the finger of God brought it therefore the grace that is upon this altar for territory I stand in agreement with the grace upon the man of God don't say I am young don't say I am a female don't say it's for those who are in business I declare to as many whose hands are open to receive in Jesus name may that man to rest upon you you will hear testimonies of territories people will tell you that I bought a land for half the price in the name of Jesus there are some of you by December you are returning back with the keys of your own house Amen. given by God built by God Amen. we're wrapping up please don't think I'm just wasting your time these are not empty words mm -mm. they are not empty words hear me for some of you fear has stopped you from connecting to strategic relationships that can build your life because you have been so disappointed you have been so betrayed you don't even want to trust people again but the only way to be fruitful is to be relational if you are not relational you cannot be fruitful for someone you are saying look i trusted this person he ran away with my money i trusted this one everybody is not a fraud star everybody is not a devil therefore i prophesy the strategic relationships that you must be connected to in this season in order to rise to an uncommon level spiritually financially in the name of jesus receive it now Amen. receive it now Amen. receive it now Amen. let me use this as an extension to all your loved ones because in this kingdom it is always as for me and my house it is not me alone if you are the only one who is courageous in the midst of five people their fear will bring you down therefore i decree and declare do you know listen one of my dear people was going to apply for something now he's he's gone abroad and i remember when he called me he said people are applying he said does there's no father no mother nobody to help him and he said can i do this i told him i said listen what makes you think you are less of a person because you have dwelt in an environment where there has to be human connection who told you god cannot help you i said with courage and with faith go ahead believe me he was one of the few people who got it and today he's enjoying he's even abroad whatever has spoken to you that you are no good whatever has spoken to you that you cannot rise there are some of you carrying territorial mantles but hiding like gideon because the devil is telling you nigeria will not hear you people will not like you i curse that spirit in the name of jesus i curse that spirit in the name of jesus and i decree and declare finally in the name of jesus the mantle of favor that can rest upon an individual and change the narrative of his life according to exodus chapter 3 even from verse 11 i decree and declare by the power of the holy spirit in the name of jesus exodus chapter 3 verse 21 he says and i will give these people favor in the sight of the egyptians and it shall come to pass that when ye go ye shall not go empty i declare by the power of the holy spirit everything that makes for emptiness in your life let it come to an end now the lord bless you in the name of jesus one last time i'm going to make the altar call i truly believe in the salvation of sinners and this is a church that believes in the massive salvation of sinners there are people who have come for this service probably the first service and even connecting to the second service and you are saying apostle let this conference not come to an end without me finding jesus again for others you are making this decision for the first time perhaps you are a first timer and then there are those who are saying i love jesus but as it is the last one year six months my life has gone haywire and i don't want to lie to myself i want to be sincere before the lord to have a fresh start 
whether you are in either of these two categories, I'm going to count one to five for sake of time. I want you to leave your seat and come and stand here. Give me the honor of leading you to Jesus genuinely in the presence of God's people. I know there has to be someone who is making that decision. I'll begin my counting. Please come. One. Come to Jesus. The foundation for an uncommon life is an encounter with Jesus. Don't wait for someone to come before you come. Apostle, I want to come, but I'm afraid of the person I came with. We just spoke about fear. Conquer that fear and come and stand and let Jesus give you a new beginning. Come. 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 What a life. Let's celebrate them as they come to Jesus. He can give you a brand new start. A brand new beginning. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you so much. I'm about to pray. If you are joining them, please come quickly. And for those who are watching by way of television or online, here is your chance to make Jesus Lord of your life. Wherever you are connecting from, pray with them. Please pray that prayer with faith in your heart. Please may I request those in front, would you lift your right hand high above your head? And please say this prayer after me. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Say, Lord Jesus, I have heard your word. I believe in you that you are the son of God. Right now, I make Jesus savior of my life, Lord of my destiny, and even my king. I ask for forgiveness of sin. And I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell and the grave is broken over my life i am a child of god i receive eternal life into my spirit from today i go forward ever and backward never in jesus name keep your hands lifted help that lady under the anointing in the name of jesus thank you heavenly father for these ones they have come declaring their faith in jesus the bible declares that as many who will come to him he will in no wise cast away I commend you to the word of his grace and I declare that in the name of Jesus you will go from glory to glory. You will go from grace to grace based on your... Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray, pray, pray for your destiny. Salas kade bashka na kata branda kete kato, kete branda kata bako tosko tobre kete kene kata. The phase of development, Lord, grant me the discipline.